Today we're going to be building this motorised two-stroke bike. This is the engine kit here. Uh, I'll put links in the description down below. You can get it off Amazon. Uh, so yeah, let's get to building this thing. Yeah, bike that I'm going to be using, and you need to have a bicycle with a uh, distance from the bottom tube here, the bottom bracket, to the top tube of at least a mi the minimum of uh, around about 34 centimetres. Any less than that and the engine's not going to fit. Right, okay, so here's all the uh, parts. Uh, we've got the fuel tank here, we've got the grips and throttle, there's a clutch, chain guard, we've got a reasonably heavy duty chain here or a light duty motorcycle type chain then we've got the mounting kit here for the sprocket to fit the rear wheel got the exhaust we've got the ignition coil here with its uh, mounting bits uh, there's a chain tensioner there's the kill switch and the part what the um, the other part that the throttle grip the grip throttle fits into and uh, various uh, cables for the clutch and uh, the throttle uh, here's the engine and here's the carburetor and just some various mounting bits to mount the engine so uh, let's get to install right so the first thing in the manual it says to attach the rear sprocket to the wheel so that's what we'll do all right so with these rubber rings here you need to cut one of them because that one's going to go on the inside and it needs to go around the hub and then obviously this one goes on the outside which then protects the spokes and then we'll be using the sprocket on top of that and then the bolts go through this way so the head's on the outside and then we'll put the nuts on the other side and the other brackets so first off you put the bolt through and then your lock washer and then your nut so if you can see that you've got the sprocket then you've got the rubber and then the spokes are in between the two rubbers and then you've got the metal bracket on the back there all right so here you can see to space the sprocket on the hub i've uh, used a load of cable ties and just pushed them in all the way around until the sprocket the um, sprocket is central on the hub so i've got the sprocket on and it's all tightened down so the sprocket you actually need to true so it's square with the hub and then I've just been putting my fingernail against here so I can feel for the high spots and then tighten the high spots down to square the sprocket up to the hub. So the next bit is fitting the engine. Uh, on my one I'm pretty fortunate it basically just fits in here nicely. I've got the carburetor on here to make sure it's going to fit properly and I can use the standard brackets which come with it. You also get this uh, U uh, bolt bracket assembly as well. All right, so here we are, I've got the engine mounted. And I did um, just get the chain and just kind of line it up to the sprocket to make sure it was gonna line up properly. All right, so we'll just put the clutch on first. And next bit, grip. Now, a way of getting these on is to put a little bit of washing up liquid, um, diluted washing up liquid on there, because the uh, washing up liquid will, um, will evaporate after a while. Whereas if you right, so fitting the throttle and the uh, kill switch, so you're going to want to make sure this is all nice and smooth. Uh, put some grease in there, preferably white lithium, which is okay for plastic, and then this will rotate nicely. Next thing you're going to want to do is to fit the kill switch on here. Now you're not going to what you want to do is you don't really want it so it's like this so you want to pull the actual mount up as far as it will go so you don't get too much side movement and then also the top clamp it's got this pin in here you can see that you can need to drill a hole in here uh, you need to make sure that you get the kill switch at the right angle where it's easy to get to and you can also put some white lithium grease inside here so it doesn't wear out as quick so yeah I'll just drill that and
so you have to install the throttle cable before you actually install the um, throttle mount here so you need to wind this in and tighten this nut up against the plastic so hopefully it won't move and then obviously the throttle adjuster is here to adjust the uh, throttle cable all right so i've got the throttle cable pulled through so what you're going to want to do is is to put the end of the throttle cable into the throttle and you just pull it around and then fit it onto the bike okay so here you can see i've got the uh kill switch and the uh, throttle on here when you twist it downwards it should pull in all right to install the clutch cable just pull the lever back fit the uh, end of the cable into the little um, barrel shape there and then just pull the cable through line the slots up at the front And there we go, all done. Tighten the clutch lever up in a comfortable position. All right, so fitting the clutch cable. So the clutch cable is actually quite long and I probably will cut this down in the end by taking the uh, inner clutch cable out and then just cutting this outer sheath. The clutch cable passes through this bit down here. This is where the big spring comes into action to hold it away from the uh, head of the engine so it doesn't mount the cable so then if we pass it through here like this and then I'm pretty sure this is what the small spring is for that goes over the cable and that acts as the uh, return or the clutch and then the cable passes through this lever so how tight we need this I'm not sure at the moment but I'm just going to kind of we can adjust this later it's going to kind of give it a little bit of tension with the clutch lever out it's going to clamp that there and then tighten this screw down to clamp the clutch cable Yeah. okay so the next thing to do is the petrol tank now the best thing for the petrol tank is to put a couple of layers of rubber inner tube in between here and the frame itself because if not you're going to get stress cracks in the bottom of the fuel tank from the vibrations from the engine one thing I was thinking about is this when once you've got this tank filled up there's going to be a chance that if you're going along uh, uneven ground off road with it the tank could fall to one side so to prevent that you could actually drill straight up through the either one of these brackets and then put a self tapping screw in and that would also mean that you'd be able to loosen off on these bolts here which go these are threaded rods here which go straight into the bottom of the so tank. So now I'm just going to install the uh, fuel shutoff valve. Uh, what I'm going to actually do is it's got a rubber gasket on here but I'm actually going to wrap some um, plumber's tape around there, some PTFE tape to make sure it's definitely not going to leak. So now I'm going to install the ignition coil. Um, I'll put a little bit of double sided stick tape underneath this just to mount it to the frame and then I'm going to actually zip tie it because in the manual it says that these lugs on the side here snap quite easily. Alright so the wiring is pretty simple so the wires from the engine, the black and the blue, we just connect the blue here to the ignition coil and the black here and then the kill switch into those two sockets 
Yeah, so then we've got this white wire left. And I didn't actually realize what this done. I had to have a look on the internet. But um, because obviously we've got a generator inside here, which is then supplying the uh, voltage to the ignition coil. And then the ignition coil is creating the spark inside the engine to ignite the fuel. So the little generator down here is uh, also got another tap on it, which is 7.5 volts at 5 amps. So we can use this to lights and lights, for instance. But you'll need a switch in between those lights, obviously, because if not, you're not going to be able to start the engine because there will be a load on the engine. So yeah, that's a handy little feature which I didn't actually realise was on here. Okay, so we're ready to fit the chain now. So what I've done is, is I've just got the chain on here and around the uh, sprocket on the engine. Uh, what I've done is I took the um, casing off the side here so I could use the uh, use this to turn the engine over and get the chain around the sprocket and get it taut. So then, and now I can find out how much chain I actually need. And then I'm going to cut the chain and then use the link, what comes with it, the quick link, to reattach it. Okay, to split the chain, I'm just gonna use a punch to punch the pin out. And I've got the quick connect link in there. So, need to put this link on top and then the locking link you need to make sure that this side goes the direction that the engine's turning because if not if you put it around the wrong way if it gets snagged this will pull off and then your chain will fall off on you and there we go that's the chain yeah. done you see i've got the chain tensioner installed and in the book it says to set this reasonably far back so when you initially set it up the pulleys at the bottom of this adjuster so that means then when the chain stretches you're able to move this up and uh, take the slack out of the chain uh, one thing i would su suggest is uh, on the actual brackets possibly drill a hole through and then put a self tapper screw in there just in case this did twist and go into the spoke this case in here which covers the uh, sprocket the drive sprocket um, this lever on the inside of this um, casing you need to lubricate that with some grease so you just basically twist it off and get to one point and then it will come and you're about to pull it out you need to grease this also here the end of this shaft, you need to grease this as well. There's a ball bearing inside here, so watch it doesn't fall out, because if not, the clutch mechanism won't work. And then just put it back together. Right, so next we're gonna be putting the chain cover on. So the mounting nut for the chain cover is actually on the back of this um, machine screw here, which goes all the way through the case and out the back on the back here. There is a nut, and that's where you're gonna attach your chain guard. Here is that nut there. All right, so now I'm just gonna install the exhaust. It is an exhaust gasket it should come with. Just put the fuel pipe on here. So we need to cut this way around is it? this only filters one way it says flow and it has an arrow on here so you want the arrow to go towards the engine put the other bit on the carburetor So now to hook the throttle cable up to the carburetor. So I'll take this bit out here and be careful that you don't need to lose anything, the spring. Or the needle. This might be better to do it actually 
off. Make sure you don't bend that needle as well, because if not, it's going to be useless. So the way this is assembled, you've got the needle that goes in first, and you've got to line it up with this slot in the side. And then there's this little washer which goes on top. Drop that in and line it up. Now if you get the throttle cable, slide through. So in the base here, there's a little hole where the little nub goes on the end of the cable. So you need to hook that in the bottom there. Just like that. And then pull this over the top. And then there you go. Pull the throttle. That should pull the needle in and out. It'll only go in one way because there's a slot on the inside. Make sure you don't bend that needle. And then just screw the cap on and you're done. Right, so fully two stroke fuel mix. In the manual it says 16 to 1 for the braking period. So on my mixing bottle it hasn't actually got 16 to 1 so I simply went onto the internet and found a oil mix jar and here it says 1 litre for 16 to 1, 63 millilitres. So I'm only going to use uh, 500 millilitres of fuel and I'm going to put 30 millilitres of oil in so that should be pretty good. In case that's all set up, I've got the fuel in there, the fuel mix. I've done it in a uh, steel chainsaw bottle and I only mix like 500 mils up. Right, so I'll just quickly show you how to start the engine. So first off, when you first start, turn the fuel on, make sure that's on, put it to the on position. And then if you haven't got any actual fuel in the lines, uh, you may need to press the priming button which is here just here press it hold it down and then that will fill the carburetor up you may also want to put the choke on which is here it's choked when it's up so when you first start it when it's warming up you might want to put it in that position and then once you've got it started uh, leave it running for two, three minutes just to warm the engine up. But my engine's already warm, so it's okay. So now we've got to do is just pedal the bike along, and then let the clutch out, and that will start the engine. And if it's cold the clutch back in straight away and hold it in for a couple of minutes until it's warmed up and then when you're ready to go uh, it's better if you're kind of cycling when you uh, let the clutch out because then it will probably put less stress on the actual clutch and you won't stall the um, engine either so we've got the throttle here it's basically like a uh, one speed motorbike really with no gears on it to change so it's pretty simple to use <coughs> so yeah uh, let's g uh, get it started and uh, have a quick ride around so I'm going to go along this smooth bit of the field here just let the clutch out and it'll start pull the clutch in Grab the engine, let the clutch out. Before you actually come to a stop, you want to pull the clutch in, because if not you'll stall the engine. 
So yeah, when you want, when you want to come to a stop, let off on the gas. So you let the throttle go, and then pull the clutch in, and then start braking, and then the engine won't um, stall on you. This thing's so fun! Check the link in the description to buy one! So yeah, it's that easy. Once the engine's warmed up, it starts really easily. It only took about, probably about five or six meters for the engine to start from cold and worked absolutely fine. I haven't um, adjusted the carburetor or anything yet, so. All right, so if you are thinking of buying one of these kits, I would, you know, for the money, I think they're well worth, well worth it really. Uh, it's a lot of fun to build and it's a lot of fun to ride and uh, yeah I mean I didn't really have any problems assembling it at all so I think as long as you've got the right size frame so the engine will fit inside it you should be pretty good it's easy to ride as I've shown um, yeah it's just brilliant really it's good, a lot of good fun so yeah, I'll put links in the description to it and in the comments section below. Go take a look at it. Uh, please comment, let me know what you think about it. Uh, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. It'd be much appreciated. Thanks very much and I'll see you next time. Bye.